I'm going to show you a sped up video of how to convert a car from gas to electric. We're going to replace the noisy, weak, polluting internal combustion engine with a state-of-the-art electric motor that puts out probably five times the torque of the gasoline engine. That was a burnout in third gear and go 95 miles per hour down the highway. We don't live in the stone age anymore, so there's no need for this. So we start by just stripping everything out of the old car. It's a Volkswagen, so dropping the engine is real easy. It's only held on by four bolts to the transaxle. Take out the steering wheel, seat, gauges. We're going to replace those. Everything's got to go. Move all this old 40 year old insulation, carpet, headliner. Everything's got to go. Use an air chisel just to get out this old insulation. And we'll replace it with new stuff. And get rid of everything I don't need. All that stuff to hold on the old emission stuff, please, who needs that? Get rid of the whole mess of old wiring, keep what I need, and throw away the rest. After figuring out where to put all the batteries, it's time to start making the brackets that hold them in. There's a total of 45 individual lithium iron phosphate batteries wired together in series to give a total of around 150 volts. Had to be kind of creative to figure out where to put them. This is for the floor of the battery holders. It's kind of funny, it goes right where the old fuel tank went. Put some of them right here. Another set down here, right in front where the spare tire used to go and the rest go right behind the front seat. I had to leave that little door so that I could have access to the transmission shifting linkage so that I can replace the transmission without having to remove all the batteries. And now it's time to start the wiring. This is a box that I'm making that's going to hold all the fuses, the main contactor, the contactor that engages the DC converter, and the shunt. These are the contactors. They need to be able to handle a thousand amps. You can see the shunt right there. And now we have to make all the connections. These are all crimped on connectors. Very important to make all the connections good because you'll get a lot of heat if they're bad. That's the fuse holders. This is two aught cable and it's extremely important to do a good job installing the uh, lugs because this needs to be able to handle a thousand amps and if you have any bad connection at all it's going to heat up to the point of melting things so you have to crimp on the connectors with a hydraulic crimper and put on some heat shrink tubing that's the hydraulic crimper right there you can't just hit it with a hammer and hope to be good Time to feed all the cable through the car. That's connected to the master switch right there that cuts off the whole circuit. A lot of cable. Obviously no need for a gas pedal anymore. Eliminate the throttle cable also. I'm going to replace it with a throttle from a Toyota Prius, which is basically a, it's a Hall Effect pedal with dual sensors and analog outputs. It was a challenge trying to figure out which wire went where. Had to do a lot of testing with the multimeter. Especially since there were five wires that came out of the throttle and only four to plug into the controller. Every connector had to be individually made. 
had to improvise a throttle mounting bracket since in 1974 Volkswagen didn't realize that I was going to put a Toyota Prius throttle in it. Installing the motor coupler and the adapter that connects it to the transaxle uh, and also a specially made lightened aluminum flywheel. Very light. Uh, flywheel doesn't have to have any amount of inertia on an electric motor but it does serve as the backing plate for the clutch pressure plate. Then installing the stage 4 Kennedy clutch and finally hooking it up to just a regular 12 volt car battery to give it a test run. Very smooth, no vibration. I'm sure a lot of you will be offended seeing me cutting into this body and I wasn't happy about it either. But hey, the motor wouldn't fit. And what am I supposed to do? Get a smaller motor? Please! Just lining everything up and it only takes four bolts to put it in place. Hooking it up to that same 12 volt car battery just to make sure it's linked properly to the transaxle and wow, it all works. Soldering all the wires into the connector for the Prius throttle and onto the end that connects to the controller. Next it's time to assemble all the wiring into that box that I constructed earlier. Really important to clean all the contacts real well and apply a uh, copper paste to have a better connection. Wiring in the DC to DC converter and finally the charger. Installing the controller, it's a Ziva MC1000 1000 amp controller. Hooking up the cables. Installing the wiring that links the controller to the core and the core to the monitor. Communication between components is done by a four-wire CAN bus interface, fairly universal. Time to start cutting up the dash to make room for the monitor, gauges, switches, and everything that VW never thought I was going to put in. This monitor displays a bunch of electrical parameters like a voltage, current, amp hours, which is kind of like the fuel gauge, uh, controller temperature, and many more. Cutting holes for the temperature gauges and some toggle switches. Again, cleaning the terminals and applying copper paste to all these high current connections. Very important. Time to install all the batteries and the bus bars. My uh, special effects team had to work overtime on this. And now it's time to test it with the full battery pack controlled by the throttle itself. And everything works flawlessly which is the main reason why I look so happy right there. Time to put everything back together, just good enough to do a test drive. I don't want to do any more work on restoring it until I know everything is going to work. Due to the extra weight, I had to replace the stock shocks with these uh, coilovers. Uh -huh. Even though lithium is a lot lighter than lead, I still have a little over 500 pounds of batteries in this thing. Here's what we have so far. A computer, and I flip that on. It activates the DC converter, charges up the computer. Then when I turn on this remote switch, then it sends power to the pre-charger, starts the pre-charging sequence, which will charge the input capacitors to the controller, and then close the main contactor. So. Should hear a click in a few seconds. There it is. Everything's live now. Here we are out on the road. As you can see by this, I'm only giving it 11% throttle. Give it a little more. Holy shit! That was hardly anything. That was like a quarter throttle and it really took off in third gear. Wow! Now that I know everything works, it's time to make it look pretty. I'm going to install this plastic dashboard veneer, which looks almost exactly like I carved the entire dashboard out of a single piece of walnut. The custom gauges wouldn't fit in the holes that were already in the dash, so I had to make this stainless steel gauge holder. And one for the stereo and other gauges. Here's the monitor I was talking about, and the Speed Hut tack, 
and speedometer. Their GPS. And of course, you gotta have tunes. Everything works. It's always nice when you hit that switch and you don't get a bunch of sparks and smoke and crap. Installing the padded top of the dashboard and then finally it's on to body work. As you can see there was a lot of body filler, rust, repair damage. You see the, the weld right there. I have to get all that crap off. I didn't want to go down to bare metal on the entire car so I already did that with my bug and I vowed to never do it again. My intention was never to do a full frame up restoration. I just wanted it to look kind of good. That's all. I really wanted to get this thing out on the road and I just really don't have patience for body work. Just trying to take care of all the areas where there's obvious rust or cracking or damage. Otherwise the paint itself is in very good shape and should be a good base after I sand it for the rest of the paint job. Priming it. It just would have been way too much work to try to take this whole thing down to bare metal. Unless I had a sandblaster, but I don't. Applying the base coat. Couple coats of it. Attempting to paint some electrical looking stuff on the hood so that it matches the bug. Really don't have any idea what the hell I'm doing. Just kind of making it up as I go. And this is what it ended up looking like. Came out a little better than I even thought. Here's that dash and the interior. And let me show you what it's like out on the street. Watch the tack and the speedo when I accelerate. It's just constant, steady torque and acceleration, no pauses to shift, no power curve. I don't think VWs were ever designed to go this fast. Driving this car is just incredible. And as an added bonus, these cars get recharged exclusively from solar, so they're not responsible for the burning of any fossil fuels. It's nice having two, that way at least one is always charged and ready to go. If you want to know more about these two cars, check out my other videos on this channel. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it.